All right, so welcome to part two of ALD's ARC 100 Assignment 1 tutorial. So now we're into the Illustrator component where we'll be covering um, your artboard and scale, going to line weights, dash lines, as well as hatches and live painting. So to start off, um, you'll see that our artboard here is kind of not the paper size that we set and all of our objects are way out here to the right. So this happened because when we drew all of our lines, they weren't at the origin. And that's kind of a weird quirk about Illustrator is that whenever you're exporting, you're going to want to export from the origin. So to fix this, we'll just be dra we'll just uh, drag all of our objects to the center here. And that's just using the basic um, selection tool. And we'll actually go into the artboard tool. So that's shift plus O. And we'll actually resize this according to the paper size that we set in Rhino. And when you're doing this, you really want to make sure that you're snapping the artboard to the anchor points or else um, you're going to have an inaccurate artboard. So let's say you're zoomed out way out here and you snap it. Sometimes it will not snap correctly. Here in this case it did, but there's plenty of times where it'll just go like this and then you might think that it's connected properly, but just zoom in all the way, make sure it's done properly. Okay, now looking at all of our lines here, uh, they maintained their original color from Rhino, so we can just select all of them like this, or you can go into the layers tab and then on the right over here and click one of them holding shift click this select all your lob, uh, objects across these four layers and we're just going to set the stroke color to black so this that's your fill color and this is your stroke color if you switch them you'll kind of see what i mean so right now our stroke is set to black and you see everything is clear and legible and we'll actually get rid of our borders so i believe that's layer four and it's always good to label your layers okay now Moving into our line weights, uh, you see that we have these projection lines over here. And right now it's kind of reading um, as if it was connected to our furniture and kind of like creating this entire thing and making it read as one object. And we don't want that. We have five separate entities over here. So we can edit our projection lines and let's make them 0.25 and you see just with that it makes it a lot clearer and you can clearly tell that we're looking at five distinct views of our piece of furniture and an additional thing that you can do is to make it a dash line so down here bottom right we could check the dash line option and the default dash is set to 12 points and that's essentially making every dash 12 points as well as the gap as 12 points but we can edit that so we're just going to select it again and let's say we want to make six points and we want an uneven gap so make that three and then it's going to look like that so typically dash lines are used for hidden lines so lines that would be kind of appearing behind our objects but in this case dash lines do work as well for our projection line, so we can actually keep this. Right. Now, our section lines over here, where we're actually cutting through our object, um, one thing we'll actually do is flip them. Um, typically, these lines, these lines pointing out are supposed to face um, kind of the direction that you're facing 
when you're looking at the object. So in this case, we're actually looking at it from this side. So this should actually be um, turned around. Um, slight mistake there. So just go to the corner here, rotate it. You see um, it's kind of very precise. And if we just hold shift, then it'll snap to kind of every um, 45 degrees. So we'll just do that. I'll drag it to the center here. And we will do the same with this one. Move it closer to the center. Right? And something else we might also want to do is kind of define these um, points a bit more. So typically, they'll actually have more of a square shape like this and they would be in solid black. So they would look something like that. So we can just take this and copy it across. Same for the other section cuts. And this is also one way to kind of make our lines consistent. So you kind of see how this line is sticking out, it doesn't really match our other label. So to edit this line, what we'll do is actually use the other selection tool, the direct selection tool. So that's A for the shortcut. And we can actually select the uh, anchor point and we can drag it to make the line smaller. So we'll do the same up here. Right, and those are our section lines. Now, another thing to mention about your lines is that there's kind of different settings for how your lines appear. Now, what do I mean by that? So, you see how the corners are not filled right now? They're kind of, they kind of end early and there's this weird um, kind of gapping that appears. Now, that's all done through uh, your stroke settings. So right now, our cap is set to the butt cap, but what we can actually do is set it to the round, and you see how it fills it in, or we can set it to the project, uh, projecting cap. And the projecting cap works well for situations where we have kind of sharp corners, but not in cases where we have rounded corners like this. You can see it kind of creates this weird protrusion. It is a small detail that you can't notice from far away, but um, you know sometimes it does help when you're printing things at a large scale and you need your lines to be um, sharp and precise. So we'll actually switch this to the round cap and that's just gonna make things flow a lot better. And we'll actually lower our line weights to 0.5 for our objects and for our section lines you'll see that we've kind of kept it at this um, thicker thicker stroke and that is actually one way to show your section lines um, it's just to kind of keep them thicker and then they'll actually read as areas that you're cutting through. And that's that's one way to do your section lines. Another way is to actually poche them. So we'll set them as 0.5 again, similar to all of our other objects. And let's say we want to set a fill for it. So typically in a section cut, they would be black and you see immediately our objects are not filling correctly. You see none of this is being filled. That's not good. However, there is a way to fix that. So we'll just select our section lines. And in Rhino, we did make sure that all of, all of our pads were uh, snapping together and everything is closed. So that's actually gonna make it uh, much easier to fill them here in Illustrator. So we have all these and we're gonna actually copy it. So Command C and we'll create a new layer. So that's here on the right. We'll go into edit, 
and then paste in place. And that's essentially just taking all of the objects we copied and pasting them in the exact same location. And what we're going to do with these is go into object, down here to live paint, and make. So what that has done is created a layer where we can actually paint into it. So if we press K, that's the shortcut for the live paint bucket. You can also find it here under the shape builder tool. So live paint bucket, and we're gonna set our fill to black. And you'll see that this red box kind of shows up and highlights these different areas where we can fill. So if we just pick an area that we're cutting through like this, then we can just fill it with black. So we'll do that for the areas that we're cutting through. And this one's nice and clean, just shows up as one. And that would be our poche. Now, sometimes you wouldn't want to use this kind of solid black poche. It is pretty hard on the eyes and you see how it almost like dominates um, your artboard here in terms of your value hierarchy. So if we go back to this, you'll see that our fill is black, but we can also substitute this with a hatch. So if we go over here to our swatches, and if you don't have this window showing up, you can go under windows and then just make sure you activate uh, swatches here. And we'll just go under this and then open swatch library. And then down here we have a bunch of different swatches, but what we want are patterns and then let's go into basic graphics and then we'll go into lines. Now we can just drag this into our swatches window over here and you see that we have this entire library of um, different hatches, but what we want is actually this um, six LPI 10%, so that's six lines per inch 10%. And you'll see that it kind of uses this hatch and treats it as our fill. And right now it's kind of weird, right? But what we actually want is for this hatch to um, go diagonally. So what we can do is go into object, transform, and then rotate. Now we're going to want to make sure that our transform objects is checked off. We only want to transform our patterns. So if we just rotate this 45 degrees and check the preview, you'll see what it's done over there. Click OK. And right now it's still kind of, the hatch is still too big uh, for my taste. So go into object, transform, and then this time we'll use scale. And we're going to want to make sure that our transform objects is checked off. And maybe we'll reduce, well, we'll check the scale at 50%. Check the preview. Let's say 25%. That's looking a lot better. So that is also one way to do your poche using hatches kind of create these diagonal lines and you see it, it reads a lot lighter than the solid black poche and that works a lot better and you'll see we actually kind of mess things up with our labels here um, so what we'll do is lock our section lines layer that's where we had the labels done correctly and we messed it up by copying over the same shapes over to our live paint layer so we can just lock all the other layers and just select these. And we're going to want to use the direct selection tool so we don't select everything. OK, so it seems like the fill has just changed for all of our shapes over here. So we'll actually just change it back. Um, there we go. So our lines there have been recovered. And 
I think we'll actually make these lines a bit thicker. Right now they're set at 0.5. Maybe we'll make them 1.5. Now it's usually always better to have the same line weight per layer so you can quickly um, select the layer and then set your line weights. It's kind of uh, troublesome to have inconsistent line weights per layer and sometimes you just uh, you know sometimes you're gonna have to mess up the order if you're in a, in a in a rush but what we can also do is bring these lines and put them into another layer so if we just make another layer called section labels then we can go into um, object arrange and then send to current layer and you'll see that our labels are here and we'll actually move these boxes as well just to keep our file clean again same thing object arrange send to current layer and we have everything nice and organized right so that pretty much concludes our uh, brief illustrator tutorial for this assignment. So when you're exporting you can go into file Export either four screens if you want a PDF or if you just want a quick PNG you go over here and select PNG and Then just export from there But that pretty much concludes it. Thank you for watching and do subscribe to the ALD YouTube channel for more tutorials like this and look out for future workshops and events. Alright, best of luck on your assignment. Thank you.